You will become one with the Borg. Resistance is futile. You will become one with the Borg. Your life as it has been is over. Hi everybody and thanks for watching another episode of What Did I Get Myself Into? Uh, and today's episode is a very special one. Uh, having said that, we are not going to be solving a puzzle today, but you'll have a much better understanding by the end of this video why the name, what did I get myself into, was so profound to me and fitting for our channel. Um, let me start with a little story. Um, the puzzle community is, is an incredible community. Um, I've met a lot of great people, a lot of nice friends. Um, having said that, some of my friends, we share puzzles amongst each other. And a few weeks ago, it was my turn to get this box of puzzles. And in this box was this, uh, I would say unassuming puzzle. This one, in fact. And I remember when I took it out of the box, the first thing I thought was, this puzzle would look awesome in wood. I'll give you a little close-up view of this. My camera zooms in today. And when I shared the pictures of the puzzles uh, with the group, I learned that this puzzle was called Borg Box. And it was titled Borg off of, uh, if you ever watched Star Trek, uh, there was an alien race of not so nice aliens called the Borgs, and a popular uh, puzzle maker named Stickman uh, made the original to this box, and he made it in wood. I didn't know this, so when everybody was telling me, oh, this puzzle, it's called the Borg box, um, I was a little bit embarrassed because I had already said this puzzle would look great in wood, and when I learned that it was Stickman, uh, who happens to be a good friend of mine, the first thing I did was was call him up and said, Hey Rob, I just saw your Borg box and I'd like to build it. <laughs> now I'm, I'm not an experienced wood woodworker. Um, I'd say probably a hobbyist at best. Um, I might do some handyman jobs around the house, some home improvements. Um, I've always appreciated woodworking. Uh, for this past holiday I made everybody cutting boards, but to the extent of doing something where I would need to draft out dimensions and have schematics on what to make, uh, yeah, I've never done that. Um, things that I've done, I didn't have plans. I sort of winged it as I went along or looked online for some tips and, you know, what to do. Um, one of the things I really love is this, turn this around, this toy box bench that I made for Geneva. And this was actually made from her crib. Convert her crib into a toy box. And so that's what I've done. Uh, with the exception of the stuff that I used for the, the toy box part, everything else, the side, the back, um, were all used from her crib. And then I uh, made this little insert here comes out. And then some more toys. This is her toy box bench. And this was a church pew that Jesse had. And it was all beat to heck. Uh, a lot of the pieces were warped. There was a lot of wood rot. Um, this side here was just one huge board. Uh, it didn't even have the spade like this side has. And the seat portion um, which you can't really tell now because I blended it, but the original seat is actually on the bottom here and, it, and it's just been blended here so you can't really even see the seam. But the original seat came out to about here. It was just really small. Um, but my wife is an incredible artist and all this painting is Jesse's work. So this challenge was more for myself. I just, I, I always like to challenge myself and 
I, I suggest to each of you guys, you know, and gals, challenge yourself. You know, try something new that you haven't done before. Uh, but this is 100% of what did I get myself into moment uh, because I plan to recreate this puzzle, uh, Stickman number five, Borg Box in wood. Now, going back to the community, the puzzle community, they, they an incredible group of people. And one of the things that I wanted for this project was I wanted to know if this was to scale, if it was the same size as the original. Um, I've learned a lot about this puzzle. And in fact, a very good friend, Steve Canfield, uh, sent me this. <laughs> This is the original Stickman Bork Box. Uh, Steve has an amazing blog uh, called Boxes and Booze. In fact, it's been a wealth of knowledge for me uh, to get information about this box in particular. Uh, so I just want to say thank you so much to Steve. Uh, and like I said, you guys, if you, if you don't read it or you haven't, uh, check out Boxes and Booze. It is a great platform of information of puzzles and artists and uh, what's new and what's going on. And they've really got their finger on the pulse. Uh, so I'd like just to say thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, these things, they, they're they valuable. Uh, it's hard to find one. Uh, so to have somebody send me one to use for a few months, uh, was incredibly generous so and I just I can't say it enough uh, thank you so much Steve uh, and again I, I'm gonna mention boxes and booze quite a bit because without their support it would make this project even harder uh, I plan to make a few of these uh, I, I don't intend on selling any of them if I did it would be for material but um, I think it's very important that puzzle makers and designers uh, get their credit and uh, profits off of a puzzle that they make really should go to them and I don't I don't want to recreate these puzzles uh, to make money off of somebody else's efforts so that is not the goal here I've already gotten countless messages of people asking if I would make one for them um, I'm confident that I will do well recreating this there's 80 pieces in here um, but again, there's there's no guarantee that I'm going to do this uh, or you know complete it. I'm confident. I'm stubborn and hard-headed and pretty persistent. And usually, when I get my mind made up to do something, it almost always gets accomplished. This though, I am frightened as heck. <laughs> um, to tell you a little bit about this puzzle, there's 80 individual pieces and the grain work that went into this puzzle and the thought um, is superb and that's really why you know Stickman is considered a master puzzle maker um, I want to replicate this this puzzle in this box in its entirety uh, my goal is for my puzzles to be indistinguishable from the original um, I think the only exception and I don't see it on here, would be Stickman's Maker Mark, which is pretty much his logo or emblem. Um, but there's 80 indi individual pieces to this box. There is no glue whatsoever holding this sucker together. Um, all these pieces have been uh, made and articulated in a way that it holds itself together. The challenge to this box is to get the lid off that we, you would that, and that's how you open this puzzle or open this box the second part the people who are you know pretty brave is you can then disassemble every panel the top sides the bottom and break them down into their individual pieces and at that point you have 80 individual pieces that without glue or nails or screws come together and make this box and, and this thing is pretty rugged um, if you want to know even more about how complex this puzzle is there was a point where stickman 
uh, on his website for people that were having trouble putting it back together. They could mail it back to him and I think for like 50 bucks he would reassemble this box for them. So <laughs> that's the challenge I have is to replicate this box. I'm going to make several of them. Um, but I want them to be indistinguishable from stick wins. Um, there's a lot of things that I've done in preparation, a lot of material that I've printed offline um, or online. Um, and again, boxes and booze was a tremendous source of, of information for me. Uh, and again, thank you to them for that information. Some of the things that I'm gonna be using along the way, of course, is my little mini ruler. I have a small square. Um, I have several larger ones also that are going to help with the, the construction part of the wood and cutting out the wood and all that jazz. Probably my number one go-to are going to be some calipers and these are used to measure. So for whatever item that you have that you want to measure. You would essentially open this up, take what you want to measure, put it here, and then you can get a pretty darn accurate reading of that measurement. So to go along with these, I'm going to need somewhere to keep these, these measurements. just an indication of how complex this puzzle is which I already know um, I'm already going what did I get myself into um, what I thought would be a, a pretty ingenious idea is I got different colors so purple green blue red and black so the different colors are going to be for the box. So the red might be the top, right, left side, and bottom of the box. And then these books are going to help with the instructions on the disassembly. Because uh, that's going to be the first thing I have to do is take the box apart. And as I do that, I want to take notes on how it's taken apart. Um, I'll include some photos of the individual pieces. Of course, I have many, many uh, pencils. These dots, um, this is a, a great product also. It's by Royal Green. Um, I figured what I can do is correlate these color dots to the piece that will also correlate to the color notebook. Whoops, <laughs> there's my butterfingers. So I will try to correlate the pieces that I take off here. So if it's on the top, um, each piece that comes off the top will get its cor corresponding color um, dot. These dots are great. They don't leave any residue on the puzzles. Uh, my number one priority is to take care of this box. It was a very generous uh, loan to me. Uh, so this is my priority is taking care of this thing. Um, so again, we'll take dots, we'll color dot each piece that will also be correlated to the notebook that has its specs, its um, dimensions. There, there were files available. Um, it's what people use to print these ones, the smaller ones, the 3D printed ones. Um, if I had them, I would still, I have a bit of OCD, so I would still want to get my own measurements. Um, if I'm going to be doing the cuts, I, I need to be confident in the measurements that I get. Uh, so that's how I'm going to be keeping track of everything. I've already made space in the safe. Uh, so at the end of each day, I can put these back in the, put them in the safe for good housekeeping. And then also, 
tons of Tupperware containers. Small ones, large ones, but these are going to be for the pieces so I can again keep them separated from each other. There's 80 individual pieces. I'm making several different boxes. So I just wanted a good way to keep those pieces. So uh, the first step is going to be getting the measurements, uh, taking it apart. Um, and then when I start the fabrication and cutting the pieces, I want to be able to keep those separated. Um, the way this is finished, it was a very uh, a, a unique step to treating this wood uh, just to help preserve it from shrinkage and humidity. Uh, and it was a process that he's that Rob used from from Lee and I'll share that later in the process but that will be the biggest way to separate this puzzle from the ones that I make is that mine won't have that lacquer in the finish until the very end so I'll be able to put this box back together and then I'll lacquer my pieces and then subsequently put those together so again everything will be done to preserve this box and make sure nothing is damaged uh, no pieces get intermingled um, and that's that um, give you a quick tour of the workshop this was basically our shed for uh, lawn equipment and a lot of the equipment that I had for just uh, home projects fixer uppers handyman jobs uh, around the house. Uh, I've always had a problem hiring somebody to do something that I thought I could do myself. Uh, so if something broke around the house, I, I always tried to see if it was something I could do myself. And so that's where a lot of these tools uh, accumulated were just projects around the house. Uh, this is a table that I need to finish, uh, but we had a nice table that was out on our patio that just over time got dilapidated so I thought I'd make a new one <laughs> this was a project that oops that I need to finish for our anniversary she's gonna watch this so I don't want to say too much about what's gonna go on in here I believe that I have a lot of the tools that I'm gonna need to do this Borg box and and I'm very excited a lot of support from a lot of folks in the puzzle community uh, and of course Rob he's been an amazing uh, resource for me and, and especially allowing me to to replicate his box or at least attempt to this is my routing table our table saw here and this is our radio arm saw very dangerous piece of equipment and this is some of the wood that we had left over for our cutting boards. I've always had this passion for woodwork uh, but never done it on a scale that I'm attempting to now and so I've always been that way if, there, if I had an idea for something or I wanted to learn or try something new I, I've never shied away from trying something myself. But this is it. This is the workshop. <laughs> it was real important to me, like I said, to challenge myself and to, to do something I haven't done before. Uh, this is not what I want to do as a living. Um, I think the people that make these puzzles, the folks like Kel Snatch, Eric Fuller, Stickman, and... Uh, I can go on and on of the puzzle makers, of the Dean Dixon, and Ty Stolle, and Tyler. I mean, there's so many amazing people uh, who have helped me along the way, but they are craftsmen and artists, and I want them to keep doing what they do. This is just a challenge for myself. This puzzle box is made by Stickman. He is 100% a master puzzle maker. And so I thought the title was fitting. So it'll be a sub-series on my channel, Remaking a Master. I thought this might be something a little different and neat that uh, I would have loved to have seen is a puzzle being made. So I'd love to share this experience with you guys. Uh, so I'll feature this on my channel. It'll be titled Remaking a Master, uh, the board box. Um, I hope you guys you know, 
have followed me on this journey. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, at least I'm not experienced with this, but I think by the time I'm done, um, <laughs> I, I, I think it might catapult me a little bit as far as my experience so I can go from cutting boards to puzzle boxes like this. Um, so that's that. That's my official announcement. Um, but again, I'm just a hobbyist. I don't think anything that I do is any is special or unique. I think anybody anybody watching this video, if you had enough patience and persistence, you could do this also. Um, but this is my challenge for myself. So, like again, it started with this unassuming box. I'm going to document as much of this process as I can, so you guys will see me measuring, uh, note keeping. I'm going to share the entire process. So. But thanks for watching. Uh, what did I get myself into? Our remaking a master series, the board box by Stickman number five. Thanks a lot. Bye.